Hello everybody, I'm back here again for another vlog of day, and today is Thursday the 22nd, and today was a beautiful day outside weather-wise. Nice and chilly, but not overly cold. I think it was in the, I don't know, high 20s, maybe something like that, maybe reached 30 degrees. But overall, nice day. Wind was blowing a little bit, but not too bad. I ended up getting up um, really early. I haven't been sleeping with a dam. I should have went to Des Moines yesterday and then I should have went today um, to see my chiropractor and that kind of get worked on and maybe get adjusted but I woke up today my ankle had been hurting me yesterday a little bit and I'd wrapped it up tried to do some stuff with it last night didn't help that much woke up this morning I could hardly walk on it like literally it was just it was insanely painful I'm not really sure what I've done to it I don't know if I've smashed it into the back of my chair somehow pinched a nerve or what's going on but it might have been running injury it's right at like where the Achilles tendon meets the uh, actual heel bone. It's insane to touch. And if I lean forward or like running and stuff, it hurts like hell. Walking around was almost impossible. I mean, I literally had to get to the bathroom and it was, I had like tears literally in my eyes walking to the bathroom. It was ridiculous. I got walking around today a little bit, got doing some stuff here and there. Nothing really major, just general things, you know, laundry and some of that kind of stuff and doing some cooking, some of those different little deals and just kind of kept trying to stretch it out, kept doing some weird motions on it, trying to stretch it different, you know, stretching techniques. And I started getting it moving a little better and it started feeling a little better. Still had pain, but it wasn't horrible. Um, had a bunch of running to go do today. Went and got the running done, um, uh, running around done. Took care of that. Um, ended up going out and picking up a trailer full of pallets. I wouldn't say full, a pickup full if you would have packed them in really good. But on my trailer, I kind of spread a little bit and stack them really great. It's hard to stack long pallets. They're the long ones that are, I don't know, they're probably 12 foot long or so. They're hard to stack those um, evenly and well when you're alone. So went ahead and got the trailer full of those, parked the van out back with the trailer full, and got yards gross and stuff, two-wheel drive van. Back in there and kind of got crooked, got the van kind of semi-stuck, went and let all the air out of the tire. Only one tire because it was just, it's a dog leg, um, which means not both tires run at once, only one tire will spin. Got it put right where I wanted it, went to pull forward about a foot from where I wanted it, and I was spinning, that was my left tire, then it was actually spinning there, so left it where it was, I figured I'll drop the air pressure. If the ground freezes up, I can get out of there, hopefully, if it don't snow, then I'll be in trouble. But if it doesn't freeze up, I should be able to pull out of there, I'll just lower the other air in the other tire, drive up out of there with the, you know, virtually flat tires. You get about eight, nine pounds of air pressure in a tire, and it's amazing how much more grip it has on it than 35 or 65 PSI, so. Got that took care of. Um, went and bought some supplies I needed to work on the truck a little bit. A couple things I want to do to it. Um, nothing really major. Just going to do a flush the radiator out. The heater cord's kind of plugging up again. That had a bunch of junk in it when I bought the truck. So I'm going to hopefully flush it out. I've got some that treatment you dump in it. And you drive it for either 10 minutes or 3 days. I don't know really. Didn't quite make fully sense of how both those are supposed to do the same thing. But we'll see. So I figure I'll drive around. I'll put some in there. Next time I head a trip up to a Tumwa. That'll give me about three hours drive time on it. Hopefully it'll flush through. Next day I'll go out there and I'll knock it all out, clean it out, flush it out real good. Hopefully get some heat again. Because right now it's running very mediocre heat at best. Um, which I've just, the airflow, if I turn the fan up on full blast, it um, blows out lukewarm at best. If I turn it down to like low, it blows out warm but at a much slower pace. So it's one of those deals I went out and reached the hoses. The hoses aren't too bad but you just, the inlet going in is much hotter than the outlet coming out, which tells me the fact it's just restricted, not enough water going through it. So I thought about just pulling it off and just hitting it with a um, hose real quick right through the actual heater core itself without dumping all the treatment in it. And I might do that. I might pull the hose off and see if I can't just flush the radiator itself out. I won't lose much water that way and much antifreeze, and I won't lose much adding back much water. So I'll be able to check and see if that's the case, if I can solve it without adding the chemicals, have to flush the whole radiator and all that good stuff. The antifreeze is only a few months old. I thought about trying to drain it, filter it, and put it back in. It's a giant pain in the butt. And there is a bunch of junk coming out of it. I don't want to mess with that at all. And if I add the additive to it, then I'll definitely, I have to get rid of that antifreeze anyway. I can't reuse it. So we'll see. I've got a bunch of different ideas of what I may or may not do with that. We'll just have to kind of see how it feels. Parmy says take it to a shop and actually have it professionally flushed and see if that may make a difference. They have a higher pressure machine. But who knows if it warms up again because they say to run the treatment with just water only no antifreeze in the treatment so i gotta drain the antifreeze then i gotta fill it with water 
and that treatment and back and forth and I don't want to be driving around you know 20 degree temperature which is water so I'll freeze my block up and I'll have problems there so also um, after I got done picking up all the pallets before I went for my run went to the gym and that I swung out to one of the care centers here in town and took Bruce out there to visit some of the patients and some of the staff and went downstairs and saw the um, Alzheimer's ward the memory care lane I think they call it and it's really interesting um, just Day, I've been out there, I don't know, many, many times. I haven't been out there for a while. I've just been kind of putting it off. One, I just kind of got out of the routine of going out there. So you just go out there quite often. I got out of the routine there. And then I was sick here for a while, and I kept using that as an excuse not to go. I got over all the flu and all that kind of stuff, and I thought, hell, it's time to get back out there and go see those people. So they never remember me and or the dog coming out, but sometimes you'll have that. It's almost you'll hear the same stories they ask this over and over again they'll talk about how they had a dog and so on and so forth so that was kind of interesting weren't there real long but they were kind of at nap time i think i caught oh, about half the uh, memory care people were napping and they got woke up to say hey see the dog that's here kind of thing blah blah whatever and went ahead and got out of there um went to the gym got changed up went for my run and my plan my training was calling for like way more I was able to do. It called for like six times what I was able to actually run today. I did a half mile warm up. Um, didn't feel, I mean it felt not bad, whatever. Then I had to basically take off. My running was calling for a 741 pace per mile and it wanted me to run a full mile then cool down, run a mile, cool down, blah blah whatever. And I went out to the um, trails where I run because it's a mile and a half loop and my intervals were going to be a mile and a half. A half mile cool down, one mile speed work, half mile cool down. Well, my speed working every time I'm making a lap there. Well, I made the first lap, the first half mile warm up wasn't feeling great. Um, got to the time to run fast, and I actually ran about 10 seconds a mile faster than what it was calling for. But as it runs faster and slower uphill, downhill, all that kind of up in the rock trail, you just kind of live with it. And my foot wasn't feeling horrible, but soon I got back to that next level of cool down for the you know the half mile cool down. I realized my ankle was still hurting. My ankle ironically felt better um, after the run than it had. All night and then I are all day and stuff. I got on the computer after I got home, got cleaned up, was on the computer doing some stuff, and my foot cramped up. Got up to go to the bathroom again, and it was just oh, it's so hard to walk on. So I've been kind of trying to stand on, trying to walk on a lot more tonight. Been kind of moving stuff around and reorganizing some things. You see the blanket behind me is different, doing different stuff there. I was going to go ahead and do the whole little dub over the running video, but I got to figure out how to knock down that sound of the running since it's way too loud, and then my talking is way too quiet. So I gotta figure that technology out there exactly what software I guess I want to use. I don't want to put a lot of effort into editing these damn things because nobody watches them anyway. So that right there is one of those deals I gotta figure out. But that's pretty much all I have for now. I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Have yourself a safe and wonderful day. Thanks for watching.